the Huntington's group has been very, just a huge, especially at this point in my life after everything, you know, I've been going through. <clears throat> well, it's helped me a lot to, to see that I'm not the only one. It's really helped a lot with that one. <clears throat> It actually, over the long haul, has made the biggest difference. And I saw him regularly for several months, um, and then invited him to come and be part of the core group that started the support group. And in the beginning, he came uh, like once or twice and was the only person that came. And. Um, he, I was afraid he was never going to come, <laughs> come back because it was so awkward what he did. And he's become um, one of our favorite members. And you know, I think he has learned from being involved with the Center of Excellence and the support group and being followed by Dr. Bird. He's learned that there are people that won't go away you know, that, he, and also people who will be worried enough when he doesn't show up to call him. He's actually made a lot of progress. I'm proud of him. Can you slow the progression of the disease, or can you actually prevent the disease ever beginning? Those are harder things to accomplish. I think that's going to take um, a lot more research. Uh, I'm optimistic. I think there will be ways to slow the progression of the disease. I think they will be found. Um, I don't know when to predict that, I think, is, is extremely difficult. Um, in Huntington's disease, there are a number of different types of therapies that are being tested. And we know enough now about the molecular basis of uh, Huntington's disease pathology at the cellular level that we can design assays that we can do in test tubes uh, where there's a certain property we know of the mutant protein that is what makes it dangerous, what makes it toxic. And so we can test different types of chemicals to see if they're able to neutralize that toxicity. I think the most rewarding aspect of what we do is that um, we give hope to people that uh, Someday there will be an effective treatment or maybe even a cure for these horrible diseases that are affecting them and uh, their family members. Um, you know, uh, one of the worst things in life is to have no hope. Uh, and so I think every time that I meet patients and their families, they're always uh, overflowing with uh, um, enthusiasm and with praise and with gratitude for what we do. And it, I think this thing that always is said by patients and their families is, you know, we know you're working hard for us and that's what keeps us going. The uh, improvements in technology and the understanding of molecular biology and genetics and protein chemistry is just galloping at a, at a very fast pace. And so the possibilities that something effective will come along in the next few years are fairly strong. So I'm, I'm, I'm very optimistic about it, particularly in the long run. But I don't know if we're talking about, are we talking about five years or 10 years or 20 years? That I don't know. I did that one a couple weeks ago. I, I didn't write you anything up because Co Coco loves uh, playing with newspapers. Let's stick them on right here in the bedroom. She loves to play with newspapers. So I've always known I've had it. I don't know why. I've, I've always known. I split them up there. I thought I had a Next year, friend's still here. Luckily for me, I could sleep through an earthquake. I felt like I've always been too much like my mother, seeing you know little things that my mother did early on in her disease that I do like her. You know, I don't know what it is, but when someone 
looks at a person with Huntington's disease on the streets. They often see someone who's an alcoholic because of how they walk or is mentally ill because of how they're talking. And so those are two huge stigmas that lay over this disease. This is not something people do to themselves. This is a gene they're born with. Devastating. Horrible. You know, there's no cure, and I mean, tomorrow I might change my mind and take myself out, but I guess it's, it's not that hard to uh, understand how I feel the way I do about having this disease. I'd rather get it over with now than go through it. Uh, my mother went through. I'm all by myself. We need resources to care for people right now and to have enough resources to uh, find out the chemical and protein and genetic basis of the disease and do something about it. We need resources for that too and so those are two very needy areas for resources and we need them both. If you know a preventative is 10 years off we've got to take care of the people now with the disease and do the best we can with our present resources. But if we're ever going to change the course of the disease, we have to put resources into uh, research and development. Um, and so you have to do both. To me it's very obvious that you have to put big time resources into both and not ignore either one. We take this home with us. We don't just uh, hang our Huntington's disease on the coat hanger and leave the office. Um, and the impact of Huntington's disease on the people caring for the families is really uh, very strong and very powerful. Uh, and it, you know, the idea that we're these sort of impersonal, objective doctors and nurses and social workers who just do our thing is not really the case. We're very emotionally involved and, uh, and tied to the families and their experiences and it, and it affects us actually uh, quite deeply. One of the keys with dealing with these kinds of diseases is getting beyond the disease and finding the person and then relating to the person. And the disease sometimes almost takes a back seat and what you do is you relate to the person and you talk to them about their job, you talk to them about their hometown, you talk to them about their children, you talk to them about what they're reading, what they're doing, and you see them and relate to them as people. Um, and then you deal a little bit with their disease, take care of that, and then, uh, and then get on with it. And I think that helps to, it helps to put things in perspective for everybody. And it makes them uh, very real to us. And then and they begin to realize that you're relating to them as people, not as diseases.